everybody. Welcome back. Boy, it was great to see you. so many smiling faces here in the building last Sunday. And I know a lot of you are coming back today, and we're so excited to see you. We have one more lesson in our Esther series. Miss Beck is here to finish that up today. But I want you guys to come on in, do face-to-face, -face, just like you're doing in school or daycare or wherever you might be spending your days these days. But Miss Beck is here. We're going to finish up our Esther series. And something special is going to happen, and it's called a feast. Do you all know what a feast is? Mm, I sure do, but I'm going to let Miss Becca talk about it. Y'all, we love you so much. We're so glad you've been joining us for all these online lessons, but we're even more happy that you're here face-to-face -face with us on Sunday mornings. We'll see you soon. Hi, good morning, friends. I'm so excited to come here and tell you another part of our story about Esther. Oh, my goodness. What have we been learning so far about Esther? Yeah, we learned that God made us special, just like he made Esther special. And God made us special so that we can help others? Yes! Did Esther help others? Yeah, she did. What was one way that she helped others? Yeah, she was really brave when she went up to the king to ask him to save her people, right? Now, what did we learn about last week? Hmm. Yeah, God made us special so we can do great things. Oh, my goodness. What great thing did Esther do? Yes, she saved her people with God's help. That's exactly right. That was a huge thing. That wasn't just like little bitty. It was a really big deal. Oh, my goodness. You know what else Esther did? She served others. And she served others with love. <gasps> that reminds me of our memory verse. Do you want to say it with me? Me too. Okay, so I'm going to say it this first time, and I want you to be my echo. Sounds good? Sounds great. Okay, here we go. Ready? Galatians 5.13. Serve one another in love. Way to go, friends. Okay, this time I want you to say it with me. And you can say it with whatever voice that you want to use, okay? I'm going to use my, my normal inside voice, okay? Here we go. On the count of three, let's say it all together. One, two, three. Galatians 5.13. Serve one another in love. Way to go, friends. I bet you'll have that memorized by now. I cannot wait to see y'all again. So you can come up and say, hey, Miss Becca, I know Galatians 5.13. I would be so excited to hear that from you. But our story today is all about how God made us special and he takes good care of us. <gasps> Aren't you so glad that we have God to take care of us? Yeah, me too. But before we really get into our story, I have something I want to show you. I have a rubber band on it so it doesn't fall apart. This, oh my goodness, did you see that? My rubber band went into it. Isn't that so silly? That is so silly. Okay, what do you think this is? Oh, it's upside down. That's right, it's a scroll. And do you know why they, oh, my rubber band fell out. I just felt it hit me. <laughs> Do you know why they use scrolls in Bible times? Yeah. So if the king wanted to make a new rule and let everybody in his kingdom know, he would say, okay, I'm going to write this rule. And he would write it out, and then he would roll it up, and he would say, all right, messenger, here you go. And the messenger would take it, and they would take the scroll all over the kingdom so everybody would know what the new rule or law was. And so everybody knew what was going on. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Well, a scroll has something to do with our Bible story today. Hmm, let's take a look. There's a message written on this scroll. <gasps> let's see what it says later, okay? But first, I want us to pretend to be writing on a scroll, okay? So I want you to pretend to unroll your scrolls. Let me see them. Ooh, those are some really good scrolls. Okay, now I want you to pretend you have a pen or something in your hand. 
and we're going to make a masterpiece, and we're going to write all over our scrolls. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. We're pretending to be the king. I think that's enough on my scrolls. Your scroll done? Okay, me too. Let's pretend to roll them back up. This is a very big piece of paper. I should have made a smaller one. All right, so what do you think the king did whenever he was done? Do you think he was just like, all right, good enough, he crinkled it up and gave it to his messenger? No. Do you think he put like a rubber band on it and was like, all right? No. He was way more official than that. He would get a piece of wax or a drop of wax. And wax is, do you know what wax is? Do any of your moms have like a Scentsy or a candle warmer or they have those things with really hot liquid in it? And if you ever touch it, it like cools on your finger. Don't touch it. That's not a good idea because it's really hot and sometimes it hurts. But that's wax inside of those, okay? And it's really smelling good wax. But this was a different kind of wax. And he would put it on right here. And I have some Play-Doh. And so I'm going to open my Play-Doh. And I have a tiny piece of wax right here. And they would kind of like roll it up, I guess. Or they wouldn't have to roll it up. They would put a drop of it on there, okay? And they would put it right there. And they have this thing that squishes it. But I don't have a squisher, but I have a thumb. So I'm going to squish it with my thumb, just like that. And I'm going to put my seal right there. Oh, my bad. But look, it's empty. Does it say my name or anything? No. So if the king was sending a scroll out, how would people know it was from him? Do you think he had, like, a mark or something that they would put on there? Yeah. Well, this is what they would do, okay? He would take a ring, and look, I have a ring right here. I'm taking it off, and I'm going to put it in my Play-Doh. And let's see. <gasps> I put my ring on it, and hearts came on the Play-Doh. Oh, my goodness. Look, and so now you would know it's sealed up. It has the hearts on it from my ring, just like the king would do with his ring. So then you would be like, oh, okay, that's Ms. Becca's ring. That's Ms. Becca's scroll that she's given me. It'd be like the same thing. They'd be like, all right, that's the king's ring. That's the king's scroll. Pretty cool. So are you ready to find out what our scroll has to do with our Bible story today? Me too. Okay, let's read it and figure it out. It says, God made us special and he will take care of us. <gasps> That is so awesome. Okay, I'm going to put my scroll away now. But I am so, so excited that God is here to take care of us, aren't you? I am. Okay, so our Bible story today has to do with Esther, Mordecai, and Haman. Out of those three people, who was the bad guy? Haman. That's exactly right. So anytime I say Haman's name in the story, I want you to make a mean face and shake your head like this. Mm. But anytime I say Esther or Mordecai, I want you to do a fist pop because we're so excited because they're the good guys, right? Right. Okay, so what do you do when I say Haman? Shake your head and make a mean face. And what do you do when I say Esther or Mordecai? Fist pump. All right, friends, we're going to go into our Brave Queen Esther book again. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to review, okay? And then I'll read the last two pages because those are like new stuff. All right, so who do we have here? <gasps> That's Esther, fist bump, and Mordecai, fist bump. So they're the good guys. And this was whenever Esther was chosen to maybe be the queen in she was going into this palace, okay? And who is Mordecai to her? Is that her cousin? That's her cousin, but he raised her. And then they're right here with all of the other ladies that might be the queen. And do you know how long it took them to get ready to maybe be the queen? One whole year. That's exactly right. So Esther is getting ready. Let's see what happens. Oh, and there she is. Queen Esther got chosen by King Xerxes to be the queen. Oh my goodness, that is such good news, isn't it? It's such good news. Oh, who is this? That's Haman. Let me see your bad faces. No. And who is this? That's Mordecai. He's a good guy, so we're going to fist pump. And all these people are bowing down because Haman, 
was really powerful, and he said, all right, all y'all bow down to me. And Mordecai, he said, no, I only bow down to my God. And so Haman decided if none of the Jews were going to bow down to him, he would just put them all to death. And he made that a rule. And he went to King Xerxes and was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. And King Xerxes was like, not really knowing what was going on because Haman tricked him. <gasps> Let me see your surprise faces. <gasps> he tricked him. And so then Mordecai gave a message. Look, there's a scroll in Esther's hand saying what Haman was planning on doing. Oh my goodness. And he told Esther, you need to go to the king and tell him to stop. But Esther was really scared. Because if you went to the king without permission, you could be killed. Oh my goodness. But all the Jews were praying for Esther. And so look, she went to King Xerxes and said, all right, I need something. And he said, of course, come in. And it was okay. And he said, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And she said, okay, come to my banquet, which was a fancy meal. And then he did. And she invited Haman, too. But did she ask him what she really needed on that first banquet? No. She said, okay, come to another banquet. And then he said, okay, what do you need? And Esther said, here's what Haman is trying to do. <gasps> And King Xerxes was so mad, oh my goodness, and he put Haman to death. <gasps> oh my goodness, and he said, no way, we're not doing that. Okay, we're going to start reading it now. So Esther told the king how Mordecai had helped her stop Haman from carrying out his wicked plan. And so the king invited Mordecai to come to the palace. He gave Mordecai his royal ring and his royal clothes to wear. And he told Mordecai to write a new law to protect the Jews. And when Mordecai finished writing the new law, the king sent messengers to every part of his kingdom to tell him about Mordecai's new law. That is awesome. And when the Jewish people heard about the news, they were so happy that they danced in the streets and held a wonderful celebration. And the Jewish people still celebrate this special day. Every year, they tell the story of how Esther saved them. And remember how God used this special queen to save her people. And God had a special plan for Esther. And he has special plans for us, too. Wow. That was awesome, guys. So, how did the king help the Jewish people? Yeah. He got rid of Haman, and he said, Mordecai, write a new law. That's exactly right. And how did the Jewish people react whenever they heard this new law? <gasps> yes. They were dancing, and they were celebrating, and they were so, so excited. That's exactly right. So God took care of the Jews, and they were his special people, and he saved them from their enemy, Haman. <gasps> Oh my goodness, that is crazy. And God made us special to take care of us too. And the Jewish people today still celebrate the fact that God saved them by celebrating on a holiday called Purim. Can you say Purim? That's good. Say it a little louder. Say Purim. Very good. That's the holiday they celebrate God saving them. It's exactly right. And we can celebrate God saving us and taking care of us too, right? Do you want to celebrate now? Me too. Okay, but we're going to celebrate in just one second because I have another awesome thing to say. So just as God took care of Esther, God takes care of us. And Jesus is always with us by being our friend. And he was always with Esther too. Isn't that crazy? Yes, that is amazing. It's crazy amazing. So, whenever I say, or whenever I count to three, let's celebrate and say, yay, Jesus, okay? Okay, one, two, three. Yay, Jesus! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Are you almost ready to celebrate? Me too, okay. So today we learned that the Jews celebrate on what holiday? 
Purim. That's exactly right. So we're going to play a game to help us celebrate that God takes care of us, okay? Okay, so I'm going to start it out, and I'm going to say, God takes care of me by... And I'm going to say a way that God takes care of me. And then we're all going to celebrate because we're so excited, right? Right. Okay. And then I'm going to say, your turn. How does God take care of you? And you're going to tell me a way. And we're all going to celebrate. All right. Let's do this. Look, I even have a noisemaker to help me celebrate. I want you to use your hands or your whatever you got around you. Let's celebrate, okay? Okay. So God takes care of me by keeping me safe, even on my way here to tell you this story. <gasps> Is that something to celebrate? Yes! Let's all celebrate! We're so excited! Okay, what's your, your turn? How does God take care of you? Yeah, that's a good idea. God takes care of us whenever we're in the store, right? And he makes sure we don't get lost and we stick close to our moms and dads. Yes. Is that something to celebrate? Yes! We're so excited. Oh, my goodness. Okay, one more, one more. What's your favorite, or what's one way God takes care of you? Yes. He helps us feel better when we're sick. That's exactly right. Is that something to celebrate? Yes. God takes care of us. Okay, let's put everything down. We're going to put our hands to the sky and down to our thighs and sit down again. Way to go, friends. Okay, so I have a question for you. How did God take care of the people in our Bible story today? Yeah, he rescued them from Haman's evil plan. That's exactly right. And how did Esther feel? Or how do you think Esther felt whenever God saved her people? Yeah, she was probably ready to celebrate too. That's exactly right. I mean, how do you feel whenever God helps you? Yeah, you want to celebrate. Good job, friends. So our Bible verse for today tells us how to take good care of other people, right? That we're supposed to serve one another in love. So God takes care of us, and we should take care of others. Do you want to say our verse with me one more time? Okay. On the count of three, we're going to say it all together, but I want you to say it in your loudest voice ever. Okay. One, two, three. Galatians 5.13. Serve one another in love. Oh, good job, friends. That was so, so good. So today we learned all about how God made us special and he takes care of us. Just like he made the Jews special, God takes care of them. Do you want to thank God for taking care of us? Me too. Okay, so let's close our eyes and bow our heads and be my echo. Let's talk to God together, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for taking care of us. And thank you for being my friend. In your name, we pray. Amen. Way to go, friends. I can't wait to see you soon. And remember, God takes care of you.